In our last episode, we learned a lot. We found Kasumi Nakano, but she didn't want to leave Acadia. First of all, because she really thinks she's a synth. And second of all, because she suspected Dima of having nefarious motives. She found some information that led her to believe that Dima was plotting to blow up the island. But upon overhearing a conversation between Dima, Faraday, and Chase, we learned that these were actually contingency plans. Ways for Acadia to respond in case the children of Adam or Far Harbor do something to hurt the island. And the reason this is even possible is because Dima offloaded some of his memories and left them in the headquarters of the Children of Adam, this nucleus. He doesn't remember what these memories are. That's the nature of giving up your memories. And he's terrified that what might be in those memories could give the Children of Adam everything they need to do something horrible. And so we agreed, first of all, to help Dima by retrieving his memories so the children can't get their hands on them. And second of all, to help Kasumi by finding out what's in those memories to make sure that Dima is on the up and up. And to complete both of these tasks, we have to infiltrate the children of Adam by pretending to be a new convert. If we didn't get the location of the nucleus from the child of Adam just outside of Acadia, we've got it now from Dima. And we learned that the nucleus is pretty close to Southwest Harbor, where we went to find Faraday's data storage drives. The easiest way to get to the nucleus from here is to follow the beach north, past that lady who drank herself to death during the apocalypse, until we find a nearly complete land bridge that spans the lake, allowing us to the other side. Here we find our ruined boat and kill a fog crawler. This one was way easier than the one at Dalton Farm. Nearby we find a sailboat with a fisherman wearing a sea captain's hat still reeling in his hull. Inside his fishing boat we find an ammo box and a first aid kit. Continuing west across the land bridge we arrive on the other side of the lake. We find a trail that leads up the hill. It passes by some trees and we can collect some raw sap until the trail arrives at two banners, one on either side of the path. These banners are inscribed with strange circular insignia. Continuing forward, we see a light in the distance and more of these banners unfurled. This is the nucleus. And as we approach, we bear witness to a disturbing scene. Richter, please, you can't do this. We've it's been a royal zealot to you, and your dedication has come into doubt. You need to prove your faith. One of you may return to the fold. The other will return to Adam. Richter, this is insane. You can't expect us to... Will there be anything else? That'll be all, sister. Thank you, Grand Zealot. These children of Adam just murdered one of their own! After the surviving child walks back into the nucleus, we can loot the corpse of the dead one and then speak with this Grand Zealot Richter. Excuse me. You. What are you doing here? Did Far Harbor send you? Oh, no. I'm with vault -Tec. Can I interest you in a new life underground? There's only one person getting put in the ground unless I get my answer. Now, did you come here from that blasted town? What's your problem with Far Harbor? Those heathens persecute our missionaries and use profane technology to steal land that rightfully belongs to Adam. Not sure which sin is worse. And I want you to assure me you're not here to do their bidding. What? profane technology are you talking about? Acadia's little lifeline to that den of sin. The fog condensers. The only reason they're able to hang on to that blasted dock. Information you'd be well aware of if they'd sent you. Far Harbor can rot for all I care. <laughs> Hear no argument from me. It's okay. I'm not from Far Harbor. I'm from the Commonwealth. Hmm. Quite the journey. So, explain to me what you're doing here. You come seeking a place among Adam's children? Adam's children? Who are they? We are the children of Adam. Servants of the creator of this and all worlds. You walk through his domain. What do you mean, his domain? The island. You've seen the fog? Heard the Geiger counter on your little bracelet pipe up? That is Adam. Spreading his glow across this land. And that glow is the path to our salvation. 
So, you worship... radiation? We worship its ability to transform. To create something better. Why? That idea called to you? I'm not interested in your cult. Just let me in. And we won't have any problems. That's not happening. Only those chosen by Adam may enter. You want in, you'll have to earn it. What was happening with those two children of Adam you were... interrogating? An issue of loyalty. Not something you need to concern yourself with. Now, unless you've come to join Adam's faithful, I suggest you go on your way. I'm interested in joining. Sign me up. Decisions of who may enter our family we leave to Adam. You'll have to perform a ritual. Prove yourself worthy in his eyes. By doing what, exactly? There is a small spring not far from here. Those chosen by Adam drink and are granted something. A token. An experience. Those not chosen... rarely return. Sorry. Not interested. Fine. Then I suggest you be on your way. Can I take some time to think about it? Certainly. But I suggest you do it elsewhere. All right. I'll do what Adam requires. Then let us hope he deems you fit. There is a small spring not far from here. Drink from it. Follow where it leads. You come back, we'll discuss you joining the faithful. With that, we begin the quest, Visions in the Fog. Drink from the spring and follow where it leads? All right, I think we can do that. We see that the spring is northwest of the nucleus, on the other side of yet another lake. Moving to the western side of this dock, we see a boardwalk that leads us to the other side of this bay. Moving up the hill, we arrive at a road, but we are immediately met by this lake, which is difficult to cross. However, just south of here, we find the narrowest part of this lake. Looks like we can just jump across here. It's not too far, backtracking south just a bit, we find a small spot with a bunch of lure weed growing, and we can just skip across. Once on the other side, we can follow the shoreline north. We eventually find a path that goes uphill and winds through the trees. At last, we arrive at Adam's Spring, but this path puts us out on a rocky ledge overlooking the spring. Looks like the spring is springing from this rock. Hopping down, there it is. Adam's Spring. The rocks covered in blight. It looks as if this location was a toxic nuclear waste dumping ground before the war. We see barrels all over the place. Highly toxic irradiated water pours from this rock. And when ready, we can drink from Adam's Spring. <coughs> A shadowy figure appears atop the rock. We can leap up and do as it says. We follow it into the woods. It leads us west, and we hear cries from the fog. A red stag crosses our path. We see more rad stag to the left. They appear indifferent to the presence of this being. If we sprint forward, we can try to talk to this person. Hello. Then we pass by gulpers to the right, who also are indifferent to our presence. Excuse me. At last, she leads us to a road. Soon, a radstag runs by. A fog crawler, like the one we heard on the way to Acadia. And there it is. But it doesn't attack. Catching up with the ghostly figure. This can't be real. We continue for a ways until at last, the ghostly figure stops. She points at a structure to the southeast. I guess she wants us to go there? We can try to talk with her. Hello? We 
can try to shoot her. But our bullets pass right through her. It's as if she's not even there. Well, we can try to do what she asks. Moving down towards this building, we discover the Children of Adam Shrine. Moving closer, we see more barrels of nuclear waste and Children of Adam banners all over the place. And then we get attacked by ghouls. the ghouls and reviving Valentine, we can open the front door to the shrine. Inside we find a couple of already dead ghouls. Looks like someone's been here recently. In the corner we find a locked security cage. Attached to it is the shrine terminal. It's a password. Must be some clue around here. So we can't hack this one. Password. Where can we find a password? There's no lock to pick. Well, we'll explore clockwise. We find a shelf with skulls and candles and bottles of questionable glowing yellow fluid. And on one of the shelves, we find a note. The Sacred Elements. The Sacred Elements Guide to Atom's Holy Word. His table leads within. The Elements Guide. The Table leads within. What does this mean? Table? Are we looking for a table? This isn't a table. This is a shelf. Beneath it, we find a cap stash. Next to this is a cabinet with caps and ammunition inside. Turning right, we see a shelf. That's not a table. There's a barrel here. I suppose it could be used as a table. Next to this is a locker with more skulls and glowing lights. Here we find an ammo box. And moving right... Wait, what's... It's... There it is! The periodic table of elements. This is our clue. But how do we interpret this clue? And then we see it. Scrawled on the side of one of the lockers. M-O-T-H-E-R. Mother? Could that be the password? M-O. Molybdenum. T-H. Thorium. E-R. Erbium. Mother. Interestingly, whomever wrote this got the atomic number for molybdenum wrong. Molybdenum is 42, not 99. I don't know if this is a mistake or if there's some significance here. Because element 99 is Einsteinium, with an atomic symbol of ES. And if we were to replace MO with ES, that spells Esther. Who is this mother? And is her name Esther? At any rate, we have the password now. It appears as a note in our inventory, but we can't read it. It's just the shrine password. But now that we have it, we can use it to access the shrine terminal. All this does is open the security door. Inside the cage, we find a desk. On the desk, we find two items. First, a note from Adam's shrine. To this shrine retreat, upon Adam think. Know his servants watch. His servants? Are there more shadowy figures than the one who led us here? And next to this... Excellent. The mother icon. This is the evidence we need to bring back to Grand Zealot Richter. And with that, the curious, green, warbly, hallucinatory state that we've been in dissipates. Everything's... Back to normal. Racing back to the road, we see that the ghostly figure is gone. Was any of this real? Or was it all a hallucination? What was in that irradiated water that we drank? Besides radiation, obviously. Before heading back to Richter, we can finish exploring this shrine. On the opposite end, we find even more toxic barrels and a blast radius board game. There's a small pool of irradiated water just outside with more toxic barrels sitting in it. And coming out of the shrine is a broken pipe pouring irradiated water. Could this be the source of the irradiated water that we drank from the spring? 
Perhaps this was a pre-war nuclear waste treatment plant. But after the bombs, the pipes have all been broken. This plant no longer treats toxic waste and now pumps irradiated water into the island's water table, producing these toxic springs. Now, back to the nucleus. The ghostly figure led us quite a ways south from Adam's Spring. Now our quickest path is to take this southern road east, which abruptly ends. Along the way, we pass by a ruined camp, and we see the remains of the camper by his ruined truck. Here we find a Yao Guai. We find money and ammunition in his duffel bag and in the ruins of his tent. Next, we find a series of ruined cabins by a lake and rowboats lodged in a tree. And super mutants? Looks like mutants from the Commonwealth have made it all the way to Maine. Moving down to explore, we find the ruins of a thrift shop. Inside, a sleeping ghoul. We find a door to the south, which leads back outside. Here we can loot a Nuka-Cola machine, where we find a Nuka-Cola cherry and quantum. Back inside, we find a number of containers to loot, a regular Nuka-Cola on a shelf next to some canned food, and after looting the cash register, we find a chem box behind the counter. Moving towards the cabin with the super mutants, we find them entrenched inside. On this top level, we find an ammo box. Moving back down, we see that they were cooking up some Meyer Lurk on a flaming barrel. There's an ammo box on the kitchen table, but not much else inside. Back to the road, it winds north, and we can follow it as it hugs this lake. Once we get close to the nucleus, we can turn right to climb into the hills. If we go all the way to the top, we arrive on a rocky ledge that puts us out on top of the submarine base. There isn't anything up here, but it is a good view. Taking the trail all the way back down, we find more buckets of sap. Looks like the nucleus is a great place to harvest raw sap. At last, we arrive back at the entrance to the nucleus, and we can check in with Grand Zealot Richter. Uh, hi there. Hmm. You're back. More than I expected. Did Adam reveal something to you? That spring was poison. Were you trying to kill me? Those waters are blessed with Adam's holy glow, which you survived. Was that the extent of your experience? Look, I drank from your murder spring and followed the woman and all I got was this weird statue. I think you owe me. A woman? Led you to that icon? I found this statue, but was I supposed to be led there by some creepy woman? What woman? A woman led me through the woods to this icon. Does it mean something? What did you see? Oh, there was a beautiful lurk tour. You know, half woman, half Mirelark. <laughs> Guess which end was which. Very funny. Now answer my question. This woman, what did Adam show you? Is there something special about this thing? I think it may be a message from someone very important. So I need you to tell me what you saw. <sighs> it was like a nightmare. Haunting whispers and shadowy creatures. And the ghost of a woman, covered in mist. Adam above. It was otherworldly. The woman, she was like a living shadow cloaked in mist. You really did see her. The mother of the fog. The mother is a messenger from Adam. Acts as a guide to those important to his plans and the future of this family. She's the one who led the first of us to this place. And if she revealed herself to you, then I'd say the path he's laying for you is clear. If you are prepared to take the next step, then I believe there is a place for you among Adam's children. You mind if I ask you some questions first? If you must. So, what exactly happened to me at the spring? Seems Adam granted you a vision. Only those deemed worthy of joining the children have them and live. But for some rare souls, he sends more. A messenger. Or in your case, the mother. So, was the mother... Real? Most people believe she's some sort of spirit, a creature of the wilds, though a few claim she's just an old hermit. Regardless, our family wouldn't be here without her. 
If she figured in your vision, well, there are few signs clear you're meant to be one of us. I explored the nature of the mother in my video on who is the fog mother that you can watch here. But I think of these options that the children themselves consider, the more likely explanation is that the fog mother is indeed a hermit woman. We find evidence for this when exploring the ruins of a house near Haddock Cove. Haddock Cove is where we went to get the Marler carapaces for the Mariner quite a few episodes ago. If we take the stairs all the way to the attic level, we find a small scrap table set out with candles next to a mannequin. But more interestingly, we find a Children of Adam banner hanging from the rafters. On the table, we find three notes. In the first one, a vengeful creature, a vengeful creature drives the good confessor away and to question his purpose. This instantly reminds us of what Demas said. As he told us in our last episode, he was originally friends with the first leader of the Children of Adam, Confessor Martin. Whatever happened to Confessor Martin? Who drove him away? The man who now leads the children? This Tectus? This vengeful creature? In the next one, the children trapped. The children trapped in a crumbling home. Mother wants to end their pain. Is this crumbling home the nucleus? Why does the author feel like they're trapped inside? After all, the fog covers most of the island. They've pretty much got free reign. It's the people of Far Harbor who are trapped on that pier. Mother wants to end their pain. How? By granting them division? In the next one, a stranger arrives. To Atom's Island, a stranger arrives. New child we spy? So this ghostly figure has been tracking us ever since we arrived at Far Harbor, watching with intentions to introduce us to the children. Then, peering underneath the table, we find a fourth note, a safer way. From Atom, we find a safer way to watch. Gifts never cease. And examining under the table, we find this safer way. Stealth boys, three of them. So the mother of the fog isn't a supernatural creature. She's a prophet, a seer, a shaman, but a human. It was the toxins in the spring water that altered our vision, our perception, and she used these stealth boys to spy on us ever since we arrived on the island and to produce that ghostly shadow. But our bullets also passed right through her. A stealth boy couldn't do that. Maybe we don't have the full picture here. What can you tell me about the children's beliefs? Our belief is in Holy Adam who struck this world two centuries ago, wreathing it in his glow. That glow is the children's way out of this place. To division. What's division? Release. Release of your potential. Of all the worlds locked away inside you, broken apart and reborn a thousand times over through the glow. Island's the perfect place for it. Thanks to the fog. The nucleus. Glow everywhere. With patience, we'll all find division in this place. Are you willing to tell me what was happening between you and those two children when I showed up? Our family is built on trust. Many people on this island would kill us without thought. Those two needed to prove they could be trusted. One did. That was all the questions I had. You're ready to take your place among Adam's children then? You know, I think I'm going to pass. Shame. Well, should you decide to heed Adam's call, return. I am ready to follow his path. Then it will be so. I'm not sure this is such a good idea. We barely know these people. Sure. I'm willing to learn. Good. Maybe we should just focus on getting Kasumi home. Head inside and present the icon to the High Confessor once his sermon is done. He'll be interested to see that. Once you've spoken with him, you should come see me. Have a task I think you'd be useful for. And here, some more appropriate attire. But know this, we are all devoted servants to Adam here. Messenger or no, actions against the family will not be tolerated. Welcome, sister. 
With that, we complete the quest, Visions in the Fog, and we begin the quest, What Adam Requires. To continue our espionage, we need to pretend to be a child of Adam by helping the Grand Zealot, and by showing the Mother Icon to the High Confessor. To better blend in, we can change into the outfit that Richter gave us. He gives us Robes of Adam's Devoted. This outfit covers all armor slots except for the helmet and the face, and it looks very similar to most of the other Child of Adam costumes we've seen so far. It's a dirty and ragged outfit, and a colander painted with Children of Adam insignia is affixed to the chest, apparently as some sort of primitive armor, with a bunch of coiled wires and perhaps that's plant tendrils? The stats are not terribly impressive and has a DR of 25, no energy damage resistance, and a radiation damage resistance of only 5. However, it can be imbued with Ballistic Weave. And in fact, many of the Children of Adam outfits we find here on the island can also be upgraded with Ballistic Weave, making a Child of Adam playthrough a viable alternative. Now, I'm not sure how these Children of Adam will respond to power armor, so we'll don this robe as part of our disguise while we pose as a new inductee. Pardon me, brother. Believe the Confessor is wrapping up his sermon. You should head inside. Heading inside, we arrive mid-sermon. They are doomed, brothers and sisters, and they know it. The people of Far Harbor need only peer out their windows to look upon the face of Adam himself, given form in holy fog. Yet no matter how inevitable Adam's reign in this land may be, they deny it. Scoff at us behind their condensers. Kill our missionaries. Slay those who only wish to bring them the light no longer. After years of skulking in the shadows like whipped dogs, our purpose is clear. And I know the key to our victory lies within the nucleus itself. We will claim the secrets hidden away by that accursed robot. And with them, we will wipe Far Harbor from the island. Adam's veil will roll down its streets. Holy fog cleansing the land of their heresy. And when we are finally granted division, it will be as heroes. A new day dawns, brothers and sisters. Glory to Atom! Glory to Atom! With that, High Confessor Tectus goes back inside his submarine, and the children of Adam go off to continue their duties. We now need to ingratiate ourselves with this High Confessor Tectus so that he really believes we're here to become a child of Adam. We'll pick up right here with our conversation with Tectus in my next episode. I publish new Fallout videos each and every week, so if you don't want to miss that episode, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have already and you feel like you're missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I've got a brand new shirt in the shop. Glory unto Atom! If you are ready to do Atom's will, you can find this design on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. It comes on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. YouTube members and Patreon patrons are becoming ever more important as YouTube continues to make changes to their platform that make the future of YouTube monetization uncertain. So to all my YouTube members and Patreon patrons, you have my sincerest thanks. You make this channel possible. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with more brand new videos. Brother? 
our family has gotten a little bigger. Welcome. I will count the bodies of the heretics I have burned. And for each one, I bring a smile on the lips of Adam. <laughs>